how has hockey developed um, between the genders or amongst the genders in, in Canada? Is is it is it is there an equilibrium between male and female hockey, or or is there a, a difference? Yeah, I, it, it, it's not an equilibrium. We're not quite as slanted as the United States is, but for the same reasons that uh, women's hockey is dominant in the United States, it's also dominant here, and that's because um, because our professional sports are so completely male uh, dominated. That's where all the, the young male athletes feed into. They go into play ice hockey in massive numbers. Um, there's lacrosse as well, the soccer, uh, American style football, um, those sort of things. And like I said, that's why it's our, uh, it's our expat communities that really do an amazing job in filling our uh our communities and finding their own families uh within our groups so it's not even and that's that's why i'm always just i i, I sit and think about our men's national team and how they're just for decades they punch above their weight and I, I i'm just amazed at how they're able to hold on to a spot you know 11th 12th in the world and still be able to qualify for the top tier competitions given how few male hockey players that are in this country but a lot of that just has to do with our priorities as a national association have been very much about elite performance and that's where the money goes into and then those guys they go abroad and they play in germany and uh the netherlands and belgium and spain and you know come back and and play for the national team and uh and perform very very well and in opposition to that, our women's team generally haven't done that until sort of the last year and a half. So that's another interesting story and and something to sort of highlight in the differences. But there are, you know, th there aren't school programs for boys players here in the, in the country. Uh, there's only club and junior programs and then players that we've picked up who have learned how to play overseas. We'll, we'll swing back round to uh, the recent uh, trials and tribulations of the women's team um, in a bit, which will be linked to a, a, possibly a question I'll ask you in a few minutes. Looking from the outside at the United States and sports in the United States of America, it seems that they are, are, are obsessed with uh, a type of masculinity, which I don't necessarily adhere to, about strength and power and brutality and causing pain, grunting, and, uh, which, which comes across it culturally in the, in, in the sports that they, they promote, uh, American football, uh, for all its similarities with, with, uh, with rugby football, um, the way they tackle causes a lot more impact injuries to, to the head, brain, neck, shoulder area, which you can't do in rugby. Um, ice hockey, you know, the, the, the idea about two just Canadians and, and the idea of where fighting is, is not only allowed on, uh, on the rink, but actively encouraged, um, is still quite popular, especially around the sort of the border towns and regions in the United States. Physicality seems to be, very, be encouraged and strength and aggression seems to be encouraged. Uh, in male sports, which is perhaps why um, hockey and association football, soccer in brackets, is is more popular amongst females. Who doesn't you don't have that as much? Would you agree with that? Is there a similar um, thing in Canada? Yeah, I would say that's that's a fair. I mean, it's a gross generalization for sure. And, and I, I think everybody at home can understand that, you know, what we're doing is just trying to examine broad, broad trends where, you know, there, there are lots of exceptions all over the place and, and movements to go in different directions and, and things like that. But I, I would agree that generally the, the, the brand of masculinity that's promoted in ice hockey has been one of the reasons that, um, it, it, it's it's a dominant force. It's an attractive force. It just it 
pulls everybody in and, and the professionalism and the ubiquitous nature of the game in Canada sets a certain cultural tone. And that's, that's always made it hard for the, the male hockey players here in Canada who are trying to grow the sport and trying to promote it, and just show how amazing it is. And, you know, you can hear it every time they're interviewed in the mainstream media and coming across and having to say, no, hockey isn't a girl's sport. It's an everybody's sport and everybody of all ages plays it. And look at how fast and skillful and strong it is. And they have to trot out this line every, every single time. Are things changing slowly? I think so, because we're reaching a point in the cultural conversation about sport where we're looking at games like American football and ice hockey and looking at the head injuries and the human cost of the way that we set up these gladiator events and saying, whoa, like, this, this is not cool. Um, young men in their 30s dying of, uh, of brain injuries and, and trauma associated with multiple concussions is not okay. And so things are really, I, there's a lot of chat here, a lot of conversations about ways to change the sports. It's an ongoing debate about whether they're going to take fighting out of ice hockey and <laughs> And, and when I say taking fighting out of eye therapy, yes, we have penalties for that behavior, but it doesn't actually result in, you know, really big bans or suspensions unless you're doing things outside the code of what is accepted in ice hockey. You, but you get a penalty and a pat on the back, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's a celebration. And it's, it's very interesting because obviously I, I was a massive ice hockey fan growing up. I was a season ticket holder of my local team until – three years ago now, I think. But the more and more I read about what was happening to these players and the suffering of their families and the, the futures lost, it really, it was really hard to watch. It's really hard for me to watch an ice hockey fight now. I just feel really uncomfortable that I am economically supporting a product that is hurting people. So anyway, this, this, this gets into my white liberal guilt, like you wouldn't believe, but um, I, I think it's a moment that sports like hockey can take advantage of in North America and say, well, well, guess what? We've, we've got something else that is really fun and fast and it looks really scary and dangerous, but actually it's a way safer than that other thing. Come watch this sport. Come get involved. Put your kids into these programs because they're going to be better off. And it's also not so commercially dominant and has all the, all the politics and power structures of, of those bigger sports. So who knows? It might be a good thing for us. I, I, I do think there is uh, possibly an interesting conversation to be had, maybe a, an important one to be had that includes feminism, that includes young male suicides. That, it, mm -hmm. that where we promote a sort of masculinity that encourages the infliction and the taking of pain. Yeah. Um, where men can inflict pain and take pain and women don't. And this, I think, alters our perception of how female athletes are promoted uh, and, and the culture around male sport and what is good sport and what is bad sport. For those who adhere to that, we think taking concussions is taking one for the team and to be promoted and actually is a badge of honour in terms of their masculinity. I wonder if, 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 if they've ever taken a hockey ball to the gonads, which is actually one of the most painful experiences I've, I've ever had in my life. Um, yeah. yeah, It's interesting though, because, because when you talk about the gender difference in that version of masculinity, I would argue that just that that overarching ideal of you know being tough taking pain all that kind of thing that's not exclusive to male gendered athletes and you know growing up as a young feminist who didn't really know much about what a feminist was i just knew that nobody was going to tell me what to do i played a brand of hockey that was rather physically aggressive and getting hit and not even pausing 
was still a, a, a badge of honor for me. It was a badge of honor for my teammates. Um, I took a few balls to the head and absolutely got concussed when I was in my teen years and, and in my early 20s. And when I look back on it now, I'm like, wow, I was, I was brain injured. And I kept playing in the game. And I kept playing next week. And, I, you know, and then I'd show up for my classes in law school and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to read the, the words on the page. So there's, there's a lot of knock-on effects. And it's, it's, these are very powerful cultural forces that aren't exclusive and they don't affect you know, just one gender, one group. It's the idealization of that whole pain is good and this is how you be a strong, powerful person in our society. And we as women in the 80s, 90s, we were aspiring to that and probably not a great thing. But we still have that attitude in the sport. You know, we, we watch players who, you know, get hit and they rock up and they just, yep. And we're like, yeah, look how tough those hockey players are. And when women do it on field, it's like, absolutely. Look at, look at these warriors. They're not taking any punishment. It's like, is, is, this, is this the right way of going about it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But it's a big conversation to have. 